Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you to put your feelers away because we're going to expose a wolf today. Again, this guy needs to be exposed. Johnny Handsome here. This is uh, evangelist Todd Bentley. And, you know, here's the thing. I, one of the biggest things that I can't understand, and especially when it comes to the delusion of the end times, is why do the gullible choose at this point to stay gullible? Why do they continue to follow clowns like this? Drew, that's really mean. You shouldn't have called him a clown. No, he's a clown. I guess, I guess the best thing that I could call him is a wolf. And there I'm just parroting what Jesus said. He called them wolves. They're coming in to obviously destroy the flock. And it, and it just seems like the flock is just standing up and saying, over here, come and destroy me. Because that's, I cannot believe, has intelligence just departed this earth? Can anybody see that this guy is just absolutely full of it. Look at this headline. Evangelist Todd Bentley claims that a shirtless financial angel visited him in a hotel room and then another wrestled him at home. And people believe this. This is absolutely astonishing. How can people believe this? This guy was exposed years ago in an adulterous affair with his worship leader, divorcing his first wife, after a bunch of so-called church leaders prophesied over him that he was just going to be just the next greatest thing, and that God had him on the fast track to just to do all kinds of miracles and all kinds of movements, and he got busted in, in the act of adultery. And did that ruin him? No. No, 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 no. I guess in many cases that helped him because then his, his new wife, after he divorced his first wife, his new wife came in and all of a sudden she was a prophetess. Do you remember her? Now, for those of you that don't know, Todd Bentley is a horrible, horrible man. He, I would call him an actual witch. He's been sent to disrupt and dismantle and try to deceive many in the body of Christ. And, and he's had some great success. Look at his head here. I don't even know how he does that. It's like possession. She's possessed, by the way. This is his new wife. She was a worship leader. And then after having an affair with Todd Bentley, apparently God was so thrilled about his adulterous affair that he gave her the title of being an actual prophetess, right? Now, you laugh. People believe this. Look at this. And you wonder why the, much of the world is disgusted with Christians. Is it because of what Todd Bentley? No, no, no. It's not because, per se, of what Todd Bentley did. It's because of what the followers didn't do. They did not follow scripture. They did not reject this chubby clown, this horrible example of a godly man, which he is not, by the way. They did not reject him. So we're in the book of Titus, chapter 1. It's a great, 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 great chapter. And it talks about what's expected from a bishop. This is just starting in verse 7, I think. Um, yeah. For a bishop must be blameless, steward of God. Um, and you can imagine what's expected of a, an evangelist, a minister, a pastor, on and on and on. But I want to bring you down to this last verse, because this is kind of a universal description of what we're seeing today. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. So how are they denying him? In works. Works? What do you mean? Well, how about adultery? See, if, if there's a, a very, uh, I'm just going to hold my tongue, uh, perverse person out there that's committing adultery while he's claiming that, uh, I don't know, like he's being visited by angels of God, yet he's caught in the act of adultery, causing the breakup of one of God's holy unions. Remember, marriage is very, very important to God. Now, this supposed leader of God, here he is, John Stamos, twin brother. Not really. Am I being mean? Yeah, I'm being mean. See, I'm watching this lady right here for just one example, being held by another person, while this evil man has got her fooled. Now, she may be in poverty. She may be in pain. She may be sick. And everything that's within her, she's trying to rely on what she perceives to be a man of God. But he is not. He is an actual devil. And all these other people that may be waiting in line, all the thousands that go to see his shows, while he makes bank. 
All right. Remember what his stupid story says up here? A financial angel visited me, and he's he's about to loose the waterways of financial blessing upon all of you. If you just, you know, just sow a seed, just sow a seed. The, the angel came, he came and told me it's going to happen, right? And these are the stories, right? They sound so good. After all, John Stamos wouldn't lie to you, would he? No, he wouldn't lie, not at all. It's like he didn't lie about his adulterous fair, right? Again, we go and look at what Titus tells us. If we can come back here, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. So even if there's a shadow of a doubt, look at his works. God calls them what? Abominable, disobedient, and to every good work, a reprobate, right? This is, goes back to the same verse, you shall know them by their fruits, right? So when Clown Boy here says that a shirtless financial angel in tight white yoga pants and golden slippers was in my hotel bathroom, there are actually people that believe this. Now, I'm gonna pause here while you just try to absorb this. Yes, there are actual people that believe it. He gets up on stage and he just tells this amazing, amazing supernatural story, right? And how his, just his whole supernatural life just continues after his adulterous affair. And now he's got a, a I, I bet he sits there and says, well, let me see what I can see. If, let me see what the crowd, if I can get, if I can convince them of just some crazy lie, just for his own, to get his own kicks, right? Okay. Okay, guys, here's what happened. Um, I was just eating my Hungry Man TV dinner and I heard a noise in the bathroom. And I walked in and there was a man standing there and he had tight white yoga pants on. So I'm, I'm wondering what's going on in, in Todd's perverted heart there, right? He's making this up. You know he is. And of course, he had no shirt on, right? What's that all about? I'm just saying, golden slippers, very, very odd. Is anybody watching? Is anybody watching? Look what it says in Matthew 7. The very words of Jesus Christ as he spoke them. You were of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Absolutely astonishing. Nobody's paying attention. I pray that you have the discernment. Let's let's read a little bit about his encounter. I'll move this over here, and we'll we'll see what old Todd here says. And of course, he's going to work the audience up so that they can give a good donation. He says, and so this angel then turned around, and I saw like out of the angel's back, he had wings and feathers like an eagle. And the angel then, the man, spread his wings out, and there was four wings. And I looked, and inside his wings, his feathers, whatever you want to call it, were gemstones of every kind, precious gemstones. Isn't that a fantastic story? And then the angel talks, and he says, oh, here it is. I'm here to release the glory that will bring a favor that will release supernatural resources for the purpose of kingdom. And I'm a financial angel from the highest realms of glory, working with heaven's economy. See how that all works out? So now you've got everybody in the audience, many of them down to their last $10 bill or their last $20 bill. They see, that's how he can just milk every last dime out of the people who came to see him by telling these supernatural stories. And this is how deception works. You know, guys, I wasn't going to tell you this, but it's for your blessing. All you got to do is put that money in the offering plate and all your financial dreams will come true, right? Nothing about the blood of Jesus or salvation. Nothing about anguish, healing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, Bentley said later he told the host pastor, the international banker angel, had appeared to him in his bathroom in the middle of the night and was told that evangelist Bob Jones and Sean Bowles were both visited by the same financial angel at the unnamed hotel. Well, why wouldn't they name the hotel? Well, we might want to go there and get a visit from this angel, right? That's pretty unfair. He also talked about another angelic encounter from 2007 
where he was forced to wrestle with the spirit of the fear of the Lord and the angel in his Vancouver, Vancouver home, like Jacob wrestled. Of course, he's comparing himself to a beloved biblical figure. I felt like Jacob. Jeez. People believe there is people believing this. This is unbelievable. What a devil this clown is. Literally, I couldn't scream for help from my wife. Oh. oh, then the angel pulled out a sword. I thought I was done for sure. You're going to slice me in two, but nope, it was a blessing. Of course, they're all stories. Fantastic stories, unprovable, unverifiable. Now I'm reading here from Matthew 10. And here Jesus is talking about the disciples and the masters. But I like verse 26 because I, I feel like this definitely applies. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. This is comforting for me because I do know clowns like Todd Bentley, someday he's going to get his. As he is destroying sheep, as he is leading tens of thousands, if not millions, to hell with his lies, with his deception, with his, his adultery. And, and don't give me the, well, he, you know, let him cast the first stone. No, it's not about that. This is about obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ and what it says, exposing the works of darkness as given in Ephesians 5.11. Expose these wolves. Expose them every chance you get. This guy is a liar. This guy is a godless freak who is making a lot of money off the desperation of the lambs of Christ. And if you're currently following this clown, Todd Bentley, I've got one thing to say to you. Do not fear him. He is nobody. He might be a good public speaker. He might have charisma, but he is nowhere near the truth or the power of the one true Jesus Christ.